factor. Now, we learned and work and kinetic energy theory, right? That is the total work done on an object equals the change of kinetic energy. Change of kinetic energy is one half of mv final square minus one half of mv initial square. Now, if we count every single force, only two of them are conservative forces. One is gravity, one is elastic force. So therefore, we can separate the work done by work done by all the non-conservative forces plus the work done by gravity plus the work done by elastic force. That gives the total work done. Still, the other side will have the final kinetic minus the initial kinetic, right? Okay. Since we already worked out that work done by gravity equal to negative delta UG, negative change of gravitational potential, and that one is also, uh, this is the plus sign, so that work done by elastic force, negative change of elastic potential energy, and then we still have this sigma W work done by none, all the non conservative forces. And here's a plus sign. So this is, this, this, is uh, this turn, this is this turn. And the other side, we have that. Still, we have the same of change of kinetic energy. Now, let's move this two turns to the right side. What we have is work done by all the non conservative forces equals to, and if we change this back to delta Ke plus, this is plus delta U of gravitational plus, move to the right, become plus delta of U of elastic, is all delta, 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 so we can have delta of U gravitational, U elastic plus Ke. As a matter of fact, that we can define gravitational potential plus elastic potential plus kinetic energy as mechanical energy. So we have something like work done by non conservative force equal to change of mechanical energy. Mechanical energy defined as gravitational potential plus elastic potential plus kinetic energy. Now, when that work done by non conservative force equals to zero, then change of mechanical energy will be zero. Change of mechanical energy equals zero, then mechanic energy is conserved. Then that is a conservation of mechanical energy situation. So I am going to show you a couple of examples of uh, that case. Let's look at this one. The first one is the mass and spring system. And let's say we compress spring by a certain distance of x. So the spring is, has been compressed. Then we let go of the block. Okay. So what happened is when the spring pushes the block, um, let's think about how many forces on the block. The block, there is mg. There is normal force. And obviously, um, there is an elastic force. That's why the block um, starts to move to the right. Otherwise, it will stay here. So there is a uh, F elastic. But obviously, when it lose contact, there's no more. I'm talking about from here uh, to the last position. Okay. Um, out of these three forces, assume there's no air friction, no friction between the block and table. Uh, isn't that true? Two are conservative forces, and only one is non conservative If we learn that work done by non conservative force equals to delta Me, we just learned that. Now, since the displacement is horizontal because the block actually moves this way, and normal force is perpendicular to it, so we say that work done by the only non conservative force equals to zero, therefore, um, our mechanical change of mechanical energy is zero, so mechanical energy is a constant. Now, 
What does that mean? That means the total mechanical before equal to total mechanical after. Since mechanical energy involves gravitational potential, elastic potential, and kinetic, in this case, the block moves around the same horizontal level. There's no change of gravitational uh, potential energy. So, as a matter of fact, we can take the ground as h equals zero. So we say the block has no potential gravitational potential energy. So before at this location, what it has is one half k of x squared. Later, when the spring get back to its original length, and all the energy actually goes to this motion as one half m v squared. So this is the case that initial we have one half kx squared, no kinetic, but final potential is zero, elastic potential is zero, we get kinetic. So we can make them equal, we say one half of kx squared equals to one half of mv squared. Therefore we can solve that what will be the v when the block lose contact with the spring. Same situation happened if we release a ball. We release a ball, the only force on it will be gravity, that is a conservative force, if we ignore the air friction. So if we take the flaw as reference h equal to zero, which is y equal to zero, initially it is h, final is y, so we say initial height is h, that's therefore initial potential energy gravitation is mgh, the object is at rest, kinetic is zero, so there's no spring involved, we don't have to worry about that. Final position, height is y, and final, that's why potential, gravitation potential is mgy, but obviously you let the ball drop a distance, it will have a certain v, we name it final, we have mv final square, so if we make them equal, initially we have mg of h, Final, we have mg of y and plus one half of mv final square. Now let's take a look. If I move this mgy to the left, I have mg of h minus y, right? And the right side is one half of mv final square. Now h minus y, what is it? That is the change of height, delta h. So before I mentioned that it is the mg delta h, which is very important because that is the change of gravitational potential energy. In this case, the ball loses gravitational potential energy because it lowered its position. Then the energy goes to, because you see, mg delta h, this is delta h. The energy goes to what? It goes to kinetic. So it goes to kinetic. So even actually we can take the final height as zero. The initial is h minus y. It will come out the same result. So it doesn't matter where you define h equals zero. As long as for this event the change of height is the same, then it will result the same final velocity. Okay, another case. Say we have a block. Moving on a frictionless table with a VA, which initial velocity is to the right. Now the spring is at x equal to zero position, which means no compression, no stretch. Okay, so initially the energy of the block is one half mv squared. I should say mva squared. Then when the block hits the spring, the spring gets compressed by xb, so it has one half kxb squared as elastic potential, and still the block has a certain kind of speed, so it has a one half mvb squared term. So at any position before the block stops, it has kinetic plus potential. Now the block has its maximum compression, so it stops. vc equals zero, and at maximum compression. So right now, no kinetic, all is elastic. And then what? Then the spring will push the block back. So the block eventually will re uh, 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 leave the spring. And at that time, all the block has is kinetic. If 
during the whole process that mechanical energy is conserved. Initially, we have this much. Since there's no any loss, when the block goes back, that VD and the VA, this is the VA, VD is that way, only changes direction, but the magnitude are the same. So therefore, we have 1 half MVD squared equals 1 half MVA squared. This is a case that ignore, when we ignore air friction and uh, the contact ground friction. So um, from the conservation of mechanical energy, if named this is E1, that's E2, have E1 equal E2, we can actually figure out at any location what is speed VB. Or if you give me VB, I tell you which location is XB. And also, when we make E1 equal to E3, we can find out what is the maximum compression with the initial velocity VA. Let's look at another case. Uh, for a isolated system. Now, we can have uh, one particle named as a system. We can also have more than one particle name, for example, in this case, we have block, <clears throat> this one M, and the other one is 4M, and with the spring, we define as the system. Okay, now, let's take a look at this case. How can we use conservation of mechanical energy to solve this problem um, in an in effective, efficient way? Now, obviously, because this block is heavier, it's going to drop, right? Our question is, if we let this 4M drop by a distance H, what will be the speed of both blocks? Now, we have to do some assumption. First of all, the rope or string connect M and 4M is non-elastic. It's what we call rigid. Rigid means the length will not change. That means how much 4M goes down and how much M has to go to the right. That is mean the string is rigid. Second, the spring is ideal spring, has no mass. Spring constant is K. No mass means we don't have to worry about the kinetic energy of the spring. We only uh, think about its elastic potential energy. Third, this is a case, let's make life easy, no friction. No friction between the block M and the table. So. And also no friction between the rigid rope and uh, the pulley. That's the pulley. So if we mark the force, we have mg, we have normal force fn, we have this kx force once the spring has been stretched. And there is tension t. And there is tension t. This is, we can consider as a pair of action and reaction force. And there is 4mg. Now, it is very important that if we define system, um, the internal force, well, in this case, the internal force is tension T. Tension T is non-frictional in this case. So internal force, as long as internal force is non-frictional, um, we are OK, because look at all the external forces in this case. This is the external, and that's the one, and that's when we have um, actually four, Kx, Mg, Fn, and 4Mg. Out of these four external forces, only Fn is non conservative Mg, 4mg, and kx are all conservative forces. And when the block M moves to the right, Fn doesn't do work because 90 degrees angle. So Wfn equals to zero. So we can say, say first, um, F internal non-frictional. And then we say that sigma W 
non-conservative external equal to zero because there's only one external non-conservative force which is no force doesn't do work then we can safely say that delta m e of the system equals to zero, which means system's mechanical energy is conserved. You see, before, when we apply sigma WNC equals to delta ME, if there's only one particle, we don't have this internal force issue. But if we pick two or more than two particles, objects, as the system, we really have to consider the internal force between them, whether it's frictional or non-frictional, because only non-frictional, that system's mechanical energy will be preserved. I think that makes sense, right? So only the internal forces are non-frictional and the work done by external non conductive force equals zero, the system's mechanical energy is conserved. Then life will be much easier. Okay, let's assume initially before this block drop and after. Isn't that after both of them because how much this one move and how much that one move and they must have the same speed so final is one half that 1m plus 4m that will be 1m plus 4m because they have the same speed v squared that is kinetic energy final change initial there's no kinetic energy because they're at rest this change of kinetic plus what's change of potential this one has no change of potential only this one this one's change is negative because it drops negative 4 m g of h that is the change of gravitational potential what about change of elastic well before the spring is not being stretched or compressed now when 4 m drops h the spring has been stretched so final is one half k h square minus the initial Initial, there's no elastic potential. That equals zero. What does that mean? Change of uh, kinetic plus change of potential plus change of elastic equals zero. Because, look at here. Delta Me actually is U of uh, gravitational plus U of elastic plus Ke. So if you delta this, that's change of gravitational, that's that. Delta of that, that's change of elastic. Delta, the last one Ke, that's change of kinetic. So, that equal to zero. That's three turn add together equal to zero. We know everything because we said, when the 4M drops by H, what is the V? And we can solve V. Now, another question is, when, what is the maximum drop that both blocks um, actually stops? which means the spring get maximum stretch. The next moment, the block will go back. So 4M will go up, M will go to the left. That is very simple because when that both block stops, you just simply place distance zero. You start with rest zero V, you, when you have the maximum drop, V zero again. So if we rewrite it, change of kinetic will be zero minus zero. And change of potential will be negative 4 mgh max. This is the maximum drop. Change of elastic now, the spring get the maximum stretch, minus 0. That equals, we turn add together, equals 0. From there, actually, we can solve what is the maximum um, drop for 4M. For that is same as the maximum stretch for the spring. Now, since we 